Son, and the Holy Spirit, who Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Well, it doesn't look like a regular Sunday, but most of our regulars are already up in Hatfield working. Uh, they were here at 7.30 this morning, already getting ready for the barbecue. And so for those of us who are here, um, you're going to have to put a little extra effort into it. Choir, you're going to have to sing a little bit louder and uh, faithful, all the responses. It's going to be just a few of us, so uh, we got to work hard to make this work today. So we do gather on a beautiful uh, summer or Sunday, and uh, 12 o'clock today is also supposed to be nice, and I do hope a lot of you are also going up to the barbecue afterwards, and uh, since I'm not attending the retreat this year, I get to listen to five hours of polka this afternoon, and I'm all giddy about that thought. Uh, so anyway, as we do gather for the celebration of Mass, few in numbers but great in spirit, I ask you to make an examination of your conscience.
lesson prescribed by the church for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice, do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the nations of the world shall be converted and shall offer God through worship. Alleluia, alleluia. Turn to me and be safe, all you ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. Alleluia, Cleanse my heart and my lips, Almighty God, you cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. In reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Then Jesus went and left from that place and withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon, but he did not say a word in answer to her. His disciples came and asked Jesus, send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep in the house of Israel. But the woman came and did him homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. And she said, please, Lord. Even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. And then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This is the gospel of the Lord. Then someone else came by and kicked those flowers over. 
Are we going to try and forget what the Nazis did? Are we going to try and start targeting Jewish businesses again, making them live all in one place called ghettos and make them walk around with the yellow star of David on their clothes? If that sounds far-fetched, I heard the son of the Holocaust survivor who was the man behind the Boston Memorial, and he said that for the first time, he and his family are beginning to ask, are they safe in America? Now these are the voices that are starting to enter into our discussions. These are the voices that are coming to the table. And before these kind of voices become normalized, and I'm not saying silence, because I really believe in that First Amendment where you have freedom of speech, you can't take that away, but before those voices become normalized, we need to be the voice that stands up to them and says, no, this is simply not acceptable. Church is a sanctuary. It's a holy place, a safe place. Now, a wildlife sanctuary is a place where animals can stay and be protected from hunters and poachers. Churches are legally recognized as sanctuaries in a similar sense and this has become front page news now that immigration enforcement has been ratcheted up. They can arrest people in courthouses, schools, hospitals, but they will not violate the sanctuary of a church building. People can enter the church as long as they stay within the sanctuary of the church building, they are remain protected. But there's another aspect of sanctuary as a holy and a safe place I'd like to talk about. It is where we come into closer contact with God, with Jesus, with one another, so that here we can then be refreshed and empowered and then be able to move on and out to confront the world. Church as sanctuary in this way is not so much a safe place to remain as it is an oasis that refreshes us so that we can come here, refresh ourselves, and then move <laughs> on in our Christian message to battle hatred and segregation. And you know, how important that confrontation is for us in our faith, its boundaries even shock Jesus. I think the story of today, Jesus and the Canaanite woman, may be just about the most honest story in the gospel. I am absolutely amazed at the, the willingness of that gospel writer to put that story in the gospel, and that tells me so much about the gospel writers and their authenticity and how important this event was, because it doesn't, at the first, put Jesus in a very favorable light, but then it would realize how human he is and how godly he is at the same time. There are indications that Jesus was under the impression originally that he was only to come to the help of his Jewish brothers and sisters. For example, as he sends out his disciples ahead of him, Jesus gives them these instructions as they leave his side and they go out. He says, go nowhere among the Gentiles. And Gentiles are everybody who is not Jewish. So go nowhere among the Gentiles, he says to his disciples. Enter no town of the Samaritan who are kind of half Jewish and half Gentiles. He's making it absolutely clear. Don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go to the Samaritans. But he says, go rather only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then in today's gospel, Jesus is in a foreign territory for some reason. He seems really out of place. He seems to only be there for a moment. He seems unsure of himself and he's ready to meet him next story, to head back into the land of Israel. Now somehow, a Canaanite woman discovers who he is and begs him to heal her daughter. Jesus' response is silence. He ignores her, just as he told his disciples to do. Don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go to the Samaritans. Only take care of the Jews. She persists. Finally, in words that I think make us feel awkward as believers, Jesus tells her curtly, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. There is no way to soften the statement or to deny its meaning. That woman and her kind, the Gentiles, are the dogs. But the woman does not give up, all for the sake of her child. And then our Lord and our Savior, a very human Jesus, has an aha moment. Just in that instant, Jesus no longer sees her as a foreigner beyond his ministry, beyond the care and love of God. Jesus, for the first time, sees her as a mother worried about her child. For the first time, Jesus sees her in the common bond of our humanity rather than through the separation of our created categories. And Jesus changes. And that's why that story is in the gospel. 
even as hard as it is, harsh as it is against Jesus, there's that wonderful story that Jesus is so much like us that he changes for the better. That's how hard it is to see that we are more than all of the things that would separate us and make us different, that we are here more to build community than to build walls. And it's so hard that even Jesus had overcome his own bias and see others not through our human eyes, but as God would have us see. Now this is the message and the challenge of our faith, and this, right here, is the place where that message has a chance to be heard, and not only heard in one ear, not the other, but to be internalized, if we can get a community that hears that week after week, and then not only shared amongst us, but then proclaimed through what we say, and more importantly, through what we do when we leave this sanctuary. This is church as a sanctuary for the downward spiral of our world. This is church as an oasis where we can leave here and we really have a chance to make a difference. A young woman was murdered, as you know, in last weekend violence in Charlottesville. Her mother said these words as a mother, just like a mother caring, for that Canaanite mother caring for her child. A mother had to say these words as she laid her baby to rest. You need to find in your heart, she said to all of us, you need to find in your heart that small spark of accountability. What is there that I can do to make the world a better place? What injustice do I see? You poke that finger at yourself like Heather would have done. You take the extra step. You find a way to make a difference in the world. Find what's wrong. Don't ignore it. Don't look the other way. You make a point to look at it and you say to yourself, what can I do to make a difference? And that's how the mother said at her little child's funeral, not her little child's, her grown up child's funeral, but I was still thinking of her, is that, that, that woman's baby. And that's how she said, you're going to make my child's death worthwhile. Our church denomination belongs to an ecumenical organization called the World Council of Churches. Like the name says, this is a worldwide organization of Christian communities. And I posted a picture from the group's website on our Facebook page for Holy Name, and it's been viewed well over 700 times. It was taken in Charlottesville last weekend. You can see the neo-Nazis in their camouflage uniforms, and they're carrying their weapons. And facing them, I mean no farther than me to that doorway, right there facing them are clergy men and women holding nothing but each other's hands, and the only argument they have is that they are praying. To me, as they say, this picture is worth a thousand words. It shows the stark contrast between the ways of the world and the way of Jesus. As Christians, we have to stand up to the people and the words of violence, because if we don't, then violent words are going to turn to violent action. Isaiah says it's short and sweet. And maybe we can leave and actually memorize his few words and act accordingly. And may this be our closing prayer in Jesus' name. May we leave, may we memorize these words. Maintain justice, says God through his prophet. Maintain justice and do what is right. Maintain justice and do what is right. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as I mentioned in the electronic bulletin, uh, the first intention prayer that I would like to offer is a prayer that I found in a, in a Christian magazine called Sojourners. And it's a prayer that has been written by Caitlin Kurtz. And this is her prayer. Jesus, somewhere between the us and them, you're holding together the least of these. Somewhere completely outside of all of this, you are ushering in a kingdom not of this world, one that rights all wrongs and rules in love. But for now, here we are. Here there are so many bodies, black and native bodies, brown and white bodies, lifeless bodies, bodies with torches, bodies kneeling in prayer. And you, with your resurrected body, stand over us, clasping shalom in your hands, weeping once again for Eden, because you've seen the path charted by brokenness. It led you to the cross, 
and in your mighty grace, it led you back out of the cave you were buried in. It led us through greed, genocide, colonialism, through slavery, through war, after war, after war, until today, when we realize that we are still buried in tombs of hate. Oh God, we are buried now. Our tombs mark what sides we are on, who we are for and against, and our bodies are longing to come alive again. You've watched our story unfold from the beginning, our hate staining our hearts, our moments of selfless love paving the way for justice. You've shown us that an upside-down kingdom has no place in an upright world based on privilege, prejudice, and supremacy. You, Jesus, the table turner, you were not afraid to shout shalom from the streets or find God in the quiet of an afternoon. You know that to gear up for the hard work meant listening intently to the voice of God. You knew that the hard work would lead to unbearable circumstances, that people would divide themselves over you, that war would come. Today, Jesus, we are divided. We are torn. Today, we are writhing in our bodies, our black, native, brown, white bodies, and we cannot hold in the kingdom when it's asking us to be made known in the lives of people the world deems worthless. So root out those original sins. Root out injustice, the kind that beckons you to come from other places to our world in the womb of your young mother Mary. Root out supremacy, the kind that puts one brother beneath another brother or one sister beneath the weight of patriarchy. Root out hatred, the hatred that devours the head and the heart and clouds our understanding. Oh, Jesus, we are so clouded. Jesus, be the Jesus we read about and be the Jesus we've never known stories of. The Jesus of deep time, deep love, deep shalom. Oh, Jesus, we need you. Unite in full grace all that is divided. Mend in full love all that is turned. Resurrect us, we pray.
I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down to heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Who will not fear you, Lord, or glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteousness and your acts of grace have been revealed.
resurrection, he freed us from sin and death, and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set and apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty words, for you have called us out of darkness and into your own wonderful light. Therefore the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Therefore, most merciful Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, most humbly beseech you to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy, unspotted sacrifices, which your holy church receives from you, imploring you to defend and guide her throughout the world, together with her priests and all true believers in the holy faith. Remember, Lord, your servant.
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, my Lord, we your servants and your faithful people, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son and our Lord, as well as his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we receive from your own gifts and presents a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. These gifts we receive with a joyful countenance, as from him who is the giver of all temporal and eternal good gifts with an unshakable faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask, O Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from the salt may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to return. To these souls, Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, grant everlasting life, and to those who are in life straight in the path of righteousness, unmindful of your fatherly love, mercifully shorten your suffering. We ask this in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. But whom you always create, sanctify, revive, Bless and freely give us all these good things. Through him and with him and in him, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine in example, we say with confidence,
May the peace of the Lord be with you always. in Jesus Christ, bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused for my judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy love. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. When shall I return to the Lord for all the graces that he has rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet of the kingdom of God in heaven. The Lord be with you. Uh, let us pray. Almighty God, your gospel reaches to the very ends of the world, and those who receive it are gathered into your kingdom. For us who have now shared at your holy table and have been grafted to your holy vine, may it always be the good news for us. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oh, the sacrifice is offered. Grant the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. To your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found light, light for the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, a darkness that did not overcome. There was a man named John sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through Him all may believe, but only to testify to the light, for He Himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, and his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willingness, but by God. And the word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love.